around this blue globe. These voyagers of many cultures were the first planetary explorers. They have bound the Earth up into one world. In our exploration of other worlds, we follow in their footsteps. Our present spaceships are the harbingers, the vanguard of future human expeditions to the planets. We have traveled this way before, and there is much to be learned by studying those great voyages of a few centuries ago. In the 17th century, the citizens of the new Dutch Republic pursued a course of vigorous planetary exploration. Holland was then a revolutionary society. It had just declared its independence from the powerful but stagnant Spanish Empire. And with a newfound self-confidence, Holland embraced, more fully than any other nation of its time, the spirit of the European Enlightenment. It was a rational, orderly, and creative society. But because Spanish ports and vessels were closed to the Dutch, the economic survival of the tiny republic depended on its ability to construct, man, and operate a great fleet of commercial sailing vessels. The Dutch East India Company was a combined governmental and commercial enterprise which sent shipping to the far corners of the world to acquire rare commodities and resell them at a profit in Europe. Such voyages were the life's blood of the Republic. Navigational charts and maps were classified as state secrets. Ships sometimes left with sealed sailing orders, the crews embarking for an unknown destination more than a year away on the far side of the planet. These expeditions were not only commercial exploitations, although there was certainly plenty of that. Beside the usual appeals of ambition, greed, national pride, and the thirst for adventure, the Dutch were also motivated by a powerful scientific curiosity and a fascination with all things new. New lands, new peoples, new plants and animals. This building, then the Amsterdam Town Hall, still attests to the hardy self-assurance of its 17th century architects. Its lavish crystal adornments still reflect the glittering pride they felt in their accomplishments and their prosperity. It took shiploads of marble to build this place. Constantine Huygens, a poet and diplomat of the time, said that this town hall dispelled what he called the Gothic squint and squalor. The Middle Ages had ended. The Enlightenment had begun. Up there, do you see, is Atlas supporting the heavens on his shoulders. And beneath is Justice with a golden sword and golden scales flanked by death and punishment. And who is it that justice is trampling underfoot? Why, it's avarice and envy, the gods of the merchants. The Dutch knew that the unrestrained pursuit of profit posed serious threats to the soul of the nation. A less allegorical symbol is down here on the floor. It is a great inlaid map stretching from West Africa to the Pacific Ocean. The whole world was then Holland's arena. In a typical year, many sailing vessels set out halfway around the world for the Far East on voyages of exploration and discovery, of trade journeys taking years to accomplish down the west coast of Africa through what they called the Ethiopian Sea, 
skirting the southern coast of Africa, through the Straits of Madagascar, and on past the southern tip of India to the Spice Islands, present-day Indonesia. Another set of voyages went south and east to New Holland, later renamed Australia. And still other journeys ventured through the Straits of Malacca to the Empire of China. But Holland was a small country forced to live by its wits. There was a strong pacifist element in its foreign policy. Never before or since has Holland boasted such a galaxy of scientists, mathematicians, philosophers, and artists. This was the time of the great painters, Rembrandt and Vermeer. Because Holland was tolerant of unorthodox opinions, it was a refuge for intellectuals fleeing the thought control and censorship of other parts of Europe much as the United States benefited enormously in the 1930s from the exodus of intellectuals from Nazi-dominated Europe. And so it was that 17th century Holland was the home of the great Jewish philosopher Spinoza, who Einstein admired so much, of René Descartes, a pivotal figure in the history of philosophy and of mathematics, and the home of a political scientist named John Locke, who was to have a powerful and profound influence on a group of philosophically inclined revolutionaries named Payne, Hamilton, Adams, Franklin, and Jefferson. The Dutch University of Leiden offered a professorship to an Italian scientist named Galileo, who had been forced by the Catholic Church under threat of torture to recant the heretical position that the Earth went around the sun and not vice versa. Galileo had close ties with Holland. His first astronomical telescope was based on a spyglass of Dutch manufacture. And with it, he discovered the craters of the moon, the phases of Venus, and the four large moons of Jupiter. Becoming an exploratory power made Holland a vital intellectual and cultural center as well. The improvement of sailing ship technology spurred technology in general. A key problem in navigation was the determination of longitude. Latitude could be determined easily. The farther south you were, the more southern constellations you could see. But longitude required precise timekeeping. An accurate shipboard clock would continue to keep the time in your home port. The rising and setting of the stars would give you the local time, and the difference between the two would tell you how far east or west you had gone. Technological advance required the freest possible pursuit of knowledge, so Holland became the leading publisher and bookseller in Europe, translating works written in other languages and printing books that had been censored elsewhere. Adventures into exotic lands and encounters with strange societies shook complacency. They challenged the prevailing wisdom and showed that ideas which had been accepted for thousands of years might be fundamentally in error. In a time when kings and emperors ruled much of the planet, the Dutch Republic was governed more than any other world power by the people. They enjoyed a certain material well-being, but the interiors of their houses, celebrated by a generation of Dutch painters, suggest restraint and discretion. The officers of these ships of exploration and trade would return from their long voyages 
share in the goods they had acquired, 